thee. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise in this morning, Jesus. We know that you are here, Lord. We know that you are moving, oh God. Oh, we invite you in, God. We invite your presence, God. We invite you to fill this place with your glory, with your anointing, oh God. Touch every heart. Touch every soul, God. Bring conviction to your church, oh God. Bring fire upon us, oh God. Holy Ghost fire in this place, Father. Fill this sanctuary with your presence, oh God. Minister in this place. Move in this place, Father. Touch every heart, every soul, every mind, oh God. Baptize someone in the Holy Ghost today, oh Lord. Bring a sinner to repentance, oh God. Bring someone to the waters of baptism, oh God. Bring fire in your preaching, oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amongst your preachers, oh God. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive worship. Receive glory, oh God. Receive praise today, oh God. For we love you, Jesus. We declare, oh, that God is in this place. Oh, he is moving in this place. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We enter in with thanksgiving unto you, oh God. For you have been good, oh God. You're saving souls, oh God. You're bringing revival to us, oh God. You're bringing dead things to life, oh God. Oh, Father, we love you, Jesus. We need you, oh God. I ask you to bless every person that's hearing this prayer today, oh God. Move in their hearts, oh God. Oh, Father, minister to every need, oh God. Bring healing, oh God. Bring miracles, signs and wonders, oh God. Bring fire from heaven upon this altar, oh God. Touch every heart and every soul. Bring conviction, oh God, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. Oh, we give you all glory, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Take your liberty, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a hand of applause because we're here with him. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you for this Sunday that the church is open. Thank you, God, for loving us, giving us breath upon our lungs, God. We praise you. We love you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah, Father. Right now, I ask you, God, to saturate this place with your presence, God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God. For the praise singers to be filled with your spirit. For us to feel your presence as we're worshiping you, God. As we're giving you all the glory and honor that you deserve, God. We praise you. We honor you. We give you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, for every need, every need that is here, God, I ask you, God, to give my brothers and sisters that peace that goes beyond all understanding, Father, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh, mighty God, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory, Father, right now, God, I ask you, God, for my sisters, my brothers, the new visitors, God, to feel your presence, Father. Let them feel that presence that only you give us. God, that, that peace, God, every stress needs to leave, every problem needs to vanish. In the name of Jesus, if you came here with pain, that pain will go away. If you believe that Jesus will heal you, he will heal you. If you're broken hearted, he is there for you. He is there to give you what you need every single day, every single minute. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, pour your spirit upon us, God. Saturate in us right now, Father. In your mighty name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to PCC. Who believes that anything is possible in this place where two or three are gathered together in his name? Anything is possible. We serve a mighty God today. We serve the King of Kings today. Hallelujah. There's no shadow that is in.
nothing better than praising the Lord. We were made to praise and worship our God. That is your one purpose, to just praise our God. When we get to heaven, there's going to be 30 minutes of just silence and awe of our God. We're going to begin to worship Him. And that is going to be unlike anything we've ever experienced. But while we're here on earth, we can at least give God all of our praise and worship up here. As you begin to raise your hands and talk to Him, I just want you to sing out these words.
Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise Him. Today is about praise and worshiping our God. Hallelujah. God, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I praise you. Come on, let's just continue to praise. We don't need any more music, but the praise comes from down deep within you. Come on, that's it, that's it, church, that's beautiful. This is your moment to praise him. Hallelujah. God, I might not be worth very much, but here it is, Lord. It may not be worth much, but here it is, my praise. Take it, Lord. Oh, I owe it all to you, Jesus. When I haven't been good to myself, the Lord has been so good to me. I have nothing but to do but praise him. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's a beautiful song. There's a beautiful presence in this place. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to welcome you this morning to Pentecostal City Church. What a great crowd we have. If, it, if you've never been here before, I hope that the praise up here didn't scare you or spook you. We are just wild for Jesus. And we welcome you today. If it is your first time, if you've never been here, make yourself at home. Please be comfortable. Find one of our ushers or one of our greeting team and um, they actually have a gift for you. If you have never been here before, we do have a first-time visitor gift bag. And at this moment, you can see Sister Linda to my right. The rest of you, please shake hands. Find someone that hasn't been here in a while and hug on them, love on them a little bit. Amen. As you start finding your way back to your seats at this time, I want to know how many of us Pentecostal, Holy Ghost-filled Christians are happy to feel the presence of God in the house today. Oh, come on. I know we're a little bit more excited than that. Our God, the one who prayed, he paid the price for you on Calvary so that you could be here this morning. And I am more than excited, more than happy, more than elated to know that he is here with us right now. At this time, I have a couple of announcements for you. And starting off, we have Sunday. Everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, that is November 19th at 5 p.m. We are going to be hosting our Friends Giving. Our Friends Giving is a time for all of us to get together, fellowship, enjoy some awesome Thanksgiving uh, food prepared by every single one of you. There will be a sheet, a sign-up sheet that will be passed around coming up pretty quick. So. Please, if there is something that you would like to bring, whoever has a sign-up sheet, I would like you to talk to them, ask them if you can bring stuff, and we'll be more than happy to share some of that here at the church. So please, next Sunday at 5 p.m., we're going to be having our friends giving over in the Fellowship Hall. At this time, Sister Lita is going to share with us an announcement. Let's hear the music first. Come on, Eli. Wonderful time of the year. Praise the Lord, everyone. Where's our slide, Eli? Praise the Lord. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas is just around the corner. So... It's going to be December the 10th at 5 p.m. It's a potluck. And after our Thanksgiving um, banquet, 
we're going to have our Christmas banquet right at the fellowship hall. And I suggested that um, you bring a, uh, a 9 by 13 dish in an aluminum tray. We are going to, I'm going to tell you what to bring. First, I need contributors or donors for ham, for turkey, and for chicken. You can bring green salad, pasta salad, any kind of salad, any kind of casseroles, desserts, sodas, coffee. And at the banquet, we will have games, we will have fun, we have fellowship, we have drawings for everyone. So are you excited to have a Christmas banquet at the Fellowship Hall? And after Thanksgiving potluck, me and Sister Dahlia will put a small table there for you to sign up. And Sister Lupi will be in charge of the Spanish people. And I'll be promoting it again before our Christmas banquet is coming near. So I am excited because this is the most wonderful time of the year, right? I love Christmas. So God bless you all. Amen. Making me hungry. All right. Amen. This is honoring our leadership month. And so we're going to have Brother and Sister Castro come up right now. Amen. <clears throat> and they are awesome, faithful leaders in our church. We love them very much. Amen. Brother Castro is in charge of our Spanish department. Spanish ministry and Sister Castro's in charge of our Sunday school. Amen. Department of Education. So we love them. Amen. We honor them. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap. That's two departments in one family. That's a big job. Amen. And we appreciate them very much. Amen. On the note of thanksgiving, why don't we prepare ourselves right now for the offering? This is a time where you are, you are given the ability to give back to the church and then to give your tithes in. Right now, as our musicians and our singers make their way up, I ask that you would open your hearts, open your minds to giving. There is no greater joy. There is no more thankful heart than the heart of a giver, the heart of someone who is more than willing to put down what they earned, what they did for God's kingdom. Amen? Amen.
Amen. I don't know how many other churches you've been to, but this church is our culture of revival. Amen. We didn't, we didn't buy it, but we definitely believe in it. And thank you for yielding yourself to it. Amen. Becoming a part of worship and praise and atmosphere that is created. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. We welcome everyone that's here. We have a number of visitors, but we have one special visitor all the way from Sicily. Amen. David over here, we're happy that he's here. And he remembers, he remembers a missions trip when Christy and Nathan were there visiting around the world. They've been all around the world. Amen. And so uh, we're happy that he's here today. Amen. Welcome him. Amen. We have uh, Filipinos and Hispanics and we even have some Chinese. Amen. We have another Italian tonight today, so thank you. <laughs> praise God, praise God. Amen. And we do miss Pastor Nathan and Sister Brenda. They're at a national meeting and they're in Florida, but they will be back here on Wednesday, so that's great. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to be hitting on all cylinders, right? Praise God. Let's let's stand for the Word of God. Amen. We'll stand just for a moment, read a couple of scriptures. We have more to read. Amen. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I am excited about this message. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the preacher's excited about it, it should be good. Amen. I feel like the Lord is behind this more than ever, and uh, what an amazing day it is. Thank you so much for the praise team. We thank them for all that happened up here. Amen. I am encouraged to be in worship. I'm encouraged. Amen. We all need to be in worship and be encouraged in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lots of exciting things are happening and uh, it's a privilege to be a part of the body of Christ all over the world. But this is our part right here. So thank you for being here. Amen. And my subject today is we are not of the spirit of this world. We are not of the spirit of this world. This world has a spirit. And we're not of that spirit. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. We're of a different spirit. Amen. Amen. We are citizens of, a, of another country. Amen. In Hebrews it says that they look for a builder whose maker, a city whose builder and maker is God. And they look, they're not citizens of this country, but of another country. Amen. So I'm reading in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 19. And it says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of this world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Hate is a strong word, isn't it? Amen. And then in Matthew 24, verse 9, it says, You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Amen. Then I have one more scripture to read for you here. And this is this this message has got two parts to it. One is what's going on in the world and what their motive is, what makes them work, and then what we are supposed to do. And since we are human, we have the potential of ill motives as well. Amen. But let me read to you. A few verses in Titus chapter 3, verses 2 to 7. Amen. This is what we're supposed to do. Since we're not of the world and our spirit is not of this world, it says to speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, that's no fighting, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, 
and hating one another. But after that, the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us by the washing and regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by faith, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. We are a different people. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. We are part of the kingdom of God. This is eternal. The world is going to pass away and everything that's in it. Amen. But, but God is not just exclusive to us. He's interested in everybody. As we just read, we used to be like the world, but now God has changed us. And we love everybody. <laughs> that was the weakest amen going. I said, we love everybody. <laughs> Amen. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for this wonderful group of people in your house. We ask your blessings upon it in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. So the world hates us. Amen. For the name of the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> we are envied for being good. Amen. All the anti-Semitic hate and of the Jews all over the world is going on, especially these days. And uh, I'm thinking and I'm hearing on the news that they don't even know why they're hating. They don't really know all the truth. But they're hating Israel, and they are inspired all over the world. This is demonically inspired. And the, the main reason you got to understand behind what's going on is that they are, the people of Israel are favored of God. And the world resents that. They don't really even understand the motivation. Number one, Satan, who was rejected, is now full of, of hate and jealousy and envy and he wishes that he could be where we are but he can't be and so he is inspiring the whole world since he's the God of this world he's inspiring the whole world to hate and especially to hate the Jews and then of course they hate America they said that the, that Israel is the little Satan and America is the big Satan so if they hate them they hate us even more and uh, they are talking about terrorism all over our country. But we are protected by the presence and the power of God. Amen. And so America, why? Why would they hate America? Well, it's because we believe in God. We believe in the one true living God. We believe in the God of the Israelis. And uh, while they don't even, many of them understand, a lot of them do and did, but we are a part of that promise. We have been grafted in. Amen. I don't think it's a good idea for you to go around telling people you're an Israeli, but nevertheless, you are a child of God. And the devil knows who you are. Amen. You are marked, but you are marked with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for that. Amen. The communist Russia, the USSR, and Stalin back in the early 1900s said this statement, we will take America without a shot. We will cause them to hate each other for race, for class, for God. We will destroy their morals. We will destroy their family. We will destroy all loyalty. They have a, a list of 45 things that they listed that they were going to do to America to destroy America. Now, why would the nations of the world want to destroy America? America is not an aggressor. America is not out to hurt anybody. We love everybody. We're the most giving nation in the whole world. Why would they want to hate America? And the answer is, is because of God. Because of a, a thing that's been going on in the world that I want to talk to you about here today. And that is 
jealousy. Amen. Jealousy. Everybody say jealousy. jealousy. Song of Solomon 8, 6 says, Set me as a seal upon thine heart and a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Jealousy is one of the most powerful motives in humanity. God made Adam and Eve, and they were innocent. But when they fell, that fall changed your nature and my nature and their nature. And that nature is enmity against God. And the prime part of that is jealousy. And I'm going to prove that here today. Jealousy is the main reason behind all evil. It's, it's a motive. Jealousy is a motive. And the root of that motive is not accepting God for who he is. The first thing that Adam and Eve did, not even realizing, because they knew God and walked with him, and it was just a, it, an event <clears throat> that took place. And so I'm sure they didn't have some philosophical <clears throat> thought about this, although they were pretty smart, way smarter than we are. They used 100% of their brain. We used 10%. <clears throat> but their first thing was to try to replace God with taking things into their hand since they got the knowledge of good and evil. So now they want to say what? And jealousy is that I'm not happy with what I have and I'm not happy with what God's done, so I'm rejecting God. God can't handle being rejected. And so it's not accepting what God has done. Now I know you, that you know this, but everywhere you turn in the world, because the devil is the God of this world, Things are sold and promoted by dissatisfaction. They want you to be dissatisfied so that you'll buy another product. That you'll buy this product. And so, <clears throat> so they're going to show people that, that are not normal everyday people. They, they, they probably call them supermodels because their, their waist, if they're a woman, is like 28 inches. And their body is perfectly built, and, and that's what they put up there. And in the minds of everybody else, they're looking at that and thinking, I wish I was like that. It's ruined a lot of marriages for men to look at women like that on the screen, and it's especially selected because it's all made to make you dissatisfied with what you have. As I grew up, <clears throat> I was short. And uh, my, my friend bought me a shirt that says that I'm an Italian, <laughs> that I'm short. And he says, life is short, and so am I. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so in the seventh grade, seven of my, six of my classmates were six foot one. In the seventh grade, those are big guys. And I was this height uh, like I still am. And I had to come to the conclusion that I'm going to be happy with what God did. Because if I spend my life resenting people who are taller, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie of the king of, of Siam. He, he, was, he was so inferior that nobody in the room could be taller than him or higher than him. So sometimes when people came in, if he was sitting down, they had to lay down on the floor because he didn't want anybody to be high. I mean, that's a, that's a major complex of jealousy. So if you love God, then you need to accept God for what he did. God doesn't make mistakes. You're not a mistake. And so it's a lie from hell to make you dissatisfied with what God did. And so... <clears throat> Communism said we're going to make them dissatisfied with their race, with their color, with everything about them. And the world sells dissatisfaction. Billions of dollars are spent on people trying to stay young, looking. And you, you know what I say. You better look in the mirror today and really be excited about what you see, no matter how old you are. Because 10 years from now, you're going to wish you looked like that. That's the way I look at it. 
because you're not going to stop the clock. But billions of dollars are spent on people dis being dissatisfied with what they look like, so they got to try to help it. they got to try to change it. And there's nothing more beautiful in the sight of God than you accepting what he did. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't take a bath or shave under your arms or, <clears throat> or brush your teeth or do some things to, to, to be presentable and, and have good hygiene. I'm just saying that <clears throat> the world and the devil is trying to make people unhappy with what God did. God is good. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. You can't beat what God did. God is sovereign, and he has made everybody different. If everybody was the same here, it would be really boring. Even if it was the most beautiful person or handsome person in the place, if, if there was 100 or 200 of those, it would be boring. But whatever God made you, the world and the devil wants you to make be unhappy about that. And so they're constantly talking to you about what you look like, about your stature, about your gender, about comparing to other people what you have, what they have, and what you don't have. And all of this is a work of the devil. And it's built on the flaw in humanity called envying and jealousy and malice and strife and hatred. But I'm calling out jealousy here today because that becomes one of the main things that everybody gets involved in. And basically what you're saying by jealousy is, I'm not happy with what God did. So we need to be happy with what God did. The scripture that we read said, we used to be like all of that. We hated one another. We said terrible things. We weren't nice. But then the Lord sent his son and he redeemed us and changed us. And now we're not what we used to be. Now we're happy with what God has done and what he's doing. And so the devil is the author of dissatisfaction. And so we desperately, desperately need to love ourselves for what we are. Amen. Love yourself for what you are, where you came from and your race, and your color, <clears throat> you can't change that. You can't change it. The Bible says you can't add one cubit to your stature. You can't change what you look like or where you're from. You can't change your history. So we all are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, so we need to be thankful that God has redeemed us. But the world is different. We're not of that spirit. The world has a different spirit. And so they're caught up in the spirit of envy and jealousy and hatred and strife. And they don't even understand what they're doing. They don't even understand the reason behind what they're doing. But it's demonically inspired. And so the gods of the Old Testament were evil. And those gods were spirits of Satan and his group. And so they were out to get the most precious commodity that we have. And so they weren't just looking for money. They weren't just looking for property. They were looking for children. And in the days gone by, we look at the barbarism of those people living their lives to serve their gods, and their gods were evil, and the sacrifice that was required was their children. And they're still alive and well today. Those gods are still around we might not use the Old Testament words and names for those gods, but those gods are still here, and the devil still wants to destroy your future and your heritage that you would pass on. <clears throat> so here in America, we're so civilized, but we have what you might call an elephant in the room, or we have something among us that's going on that is more barbaric than anything the world has, and that is destroying babies inside their mother. And people don't want to think about the atrocities that happened a month ago because they were so terrible and I don't want to see it and I don't even want to hear about it. And I've heard a few things and I just started crying because it was terrible. <clears throat> but then you think about how this country right here who is a Christian country and believes in God has reserved the right to murder babies. 
So I'm just saying, that's barbaric. That's evil. That's what the gods of the devil are requiring of humanity. Give up your future. Give up your children. We need to love our children. We need to train our children. And all of this is motivated by the things that are in the world. And the main thing that's there is jealousy. So <clears throat> the major agenda is jealousy. And the power that people have, they wish, other people wish they had that power. <clears throat> America has been known as a superpower. And when USSR fell, then we became per pretty much the lone superpower in the world. And a whole lot of people resent us because we are a superpower. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we're bad. It doesn't mean that we're not generous. We're giving money to our enemies. I don't know why we would do that, but we're giving billions of dollars to our enemies. Right there on the Gaza Strip, we have put over $100 billion out for them to be improved, and all of it went underneath to have weapons to fight us. <clears throat> so no matter how nice you are to evil, evil's never going to be nice to you because it resents what you have. You have God. You have the goodness of God. You have the love of God. You have the favor of God. And the devil's never going to like that. I spent my life trying to have people like me and be happy about me until I finally realized you can't make everybody happy. And some people don't want to like you. They resent you being good. I worked at the Broadway warehouse, and every day I came in there, there was a guy that a bunch of the guys got together, and they said, this guy's going to beat you up. Now, I'm, I'm a fighter, so, but I can't fight because I'm a child of God. Uh, but when I was a kid, I finished every fight somebody else started. But now I'm on the job. I'm a preacher. I got a license. I'm a pastor. <clears throat> and, and they got their, their heart set on fighting me. So every day he would get drunk at lunch and come back after lunch with a little bit more boldness. <clears throat> and I had to be careful because uh, I'm pretty sure I could take him. But that would be me yielding to what the devil wants. But they resented me. And I used to wonder why do they, I try to be nice to them. I greet them. I help them. I'm, I do everything. They resented my goodness. They resented my goodness. They didn't want me to be good. That goodness convicted them about what they did. And he never did fight me and I never did fight him. But, but I realized that they don't like me. They don't like me. It didn't matter what color they were. They were all colors. It didn't matter what education they had. It didn't matter what department they worked in. They resented good from God. And so we've got to be good from God. But we are blessed with the goodness of God. Thank God for that. In the spirit realm, you are a force to be reckoned with. I'm going to talk more about this in a minute. But the whole spirit realm knows who you are. This church is a place where you come and you're educated and you're blessed and you worship God. And that all is powerful. But you are who you are. And in the spirit realm, they have to have respect to you. They cannot mess with you. They cannot do what they would like to do. You wouldn't be here today if the devil and his angels had his, their way. But they can't stop it. The devil doesn't like this message because I'm fixing to expose his whole operation and his whole motive. He doesn't like it, but he can't stop it. And if he turns off this mic or turns off the PA system, he still can't stop the message. Because God's in charge and we are the favored of God and we are the blessed of God. But his agenda is jealousy. And so, back in the 1500s, even in Christianity, they were jealous over certain people that did things. I mean, people that, that discovered things, they were jealous of them. They didn't understand. They couldn't fit it in their mind. And it represented a threat to their power. So, they would call them a witch, or a warlock, and they would burn them at the stake because they did something that was against the status quo. And this was supposedly Christianity. 
1529, they burnt William Tyndale to the stake. And it was because he translated the Bible into English and to German and to Spanish. And they were against that because, well, they didn't want people to have the Bible to actually start comparing and reading what the Bible said. So they wanted to stay with the status quo, but the fact is they were just jealous of anybody else having power. And the devil is jealous of people having power. So jealousy, let's talk about jealousy here for a minute because it's, it's the big issue in, in life that we all need to be careful with. And there's four levels of problems or issues that I want to mention here. There's surface problems. A surface problem is on the surface. It's a habit. It's a bondage. It's drugs and drinking. And it's, it's a result of something else that's going on. But it's outward appearance that you see. That person's homeless. That person is drunk. That person is out of their mind on drugs. That person is not happy. That person is, is miserable in life. What, what is the... Issue. Well, this is the surface problem. So you recognize the problem, but you don't necessarily know what the surface cause is. There's a surface cause to the problem. A cause to the problem is the desires and the lust of what people have. And that's what the devil tempts you for and with. So because people are wanting their heart to be satisfied or they're looking for peace... They can't find it unless they're just half lit. They can't find it unless they're, they're on some kind of a drug that makes them numb. This becomes the, the surface cause. Not the surface problem, but the surface cause. The cause behind people in the world on drugs. Let's just use drugs for an example that's a rampant thing all over the world. Why would people do that to their own body? Why would people do that to their life? It destroys their family, their marriage, their health. It destroys everything. Why would you do that? Because the cause behind that is, is there's something going on in my life I'm not happy about, and I can't do anything about it. So the surface problem, don't look at somebody that's smoking a cigarette and think, you know, you're going to hell because you're smoking a cigarette. The Lord wants to save them. That cigarette's not good for your health. But the thing is, is that person it doesn't mean that they're a bad person just because they're smoking. They got a problem. That's the surface problem. So if you see that surface problem as an opportunity to realize that there's a surface cause to that problem. There's something about that that's, that's causing that problem to be like that. Some people in life don't want to smoke. They don't need to have habits. They don't need to have surface problems. How many are with me? Okay, so then there's a root problem. The root of this problem is now not just being unhappy or looking for peace, but the root problem is greed, like for Judas, or jealousy. Jealousy is a root problem. It's now down to not surface problem, surface cause. Now we're down to the third level down, and that is the root problem. This is not the root cause. This is the root problem. But the root problem is jealousy. The Bible, as we read it here earlier, said jealousy is cruel as the grave. Jealousy makes people do things they would never do. Jealousy is terrible. And so we can't have jealousy in our heart and in our life. It needs to be rooted out. But jealousy is the root problem. Then what is the root cause? What is the root cause of jealousy? I'm going to illustrate here a few illustrations that will help you to understand what I've just said, if you can remember what I've just said. But the root cause is a lack of submission and love for God. That's the root cause. That's the bottom line. That's, that's all the way down to the bottom. You got all these issues up here, all the way down to causes and, and issues. But by the time you get to the bottom of it all, if you loved God and served God and you were submitted to God, you wouldn't have any of these problems. You wouldn't have any of these causes. Your main cause and life goal would be to please God and serve God. And you would be blessed.
Malice, give you a definition for malice. We've talked about jealousy. It's about actually envy. Envy is desiring something uh, that somebody else has and you envy it. You envy their intelligence. You envy their looks. You envy their life. You envy their money. You envy their station in life. You envy their power. And you need to be happy with what you have and don't envy what somebody else has. And in the Ten Commandments, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's because she's already married. Get your own wife. Right? But don't desire something that you're not supposed to have because that already belongs to somebody else. Okay? So envy is wanting something that, that somebody else has. And then you want it so bad till you finally get jealous of what they have. And jealousy is cruel. So now you find somebody treating you terrible or feeling bad about you and hating you. And you're thinking, what did I do to you? Why would you hate me? It's because they're jealous. And I'm not here to talk about them necessarily just to illustrate to you. We can't afford to have that in our life because then we're no different than them, number one. But number two, our whole motive is based on the devil's kingdom because the devil... Instantly, when Adam and Eve failed, started out with jealousy. So Cain and Abel brought sacrifices, and God accepted Abel's sacrifice and rejected Cain's. And instead of Cain saying, how can I fix my sacrifice to be better? How many are with me? He said, I'm jealous of my brother. I feel envy of my brother I feel strife against my brother. I feel hatred against my brother. Why? Because my brother was accepted and I was rejected. If you want to blame God for that, then you're going down the wrong road. You need to ask God, what did I need to do to make you happy, to please you? Because you're the creator. I want to please God. So Cain, out of envy and strife, and hatred and jealousy kills Abel. And that's just the beginning. I could have a hundred illustrations, and I'm not, I'm only going to have three. But I could have a hundred illustrations throughout the Bible of what the issue was in humanity. And what's going on in the world. Right now we have nations fighting against nation. The Bible said you're going to be hated of all nations for my namesake. And so people are hating on Israel and nations around the world are hating and they don't really even know why they hate them. They're actually trying to do good and they've always actually tried to do good if you study their history. They've had the favor of God and the world hates people that have God's favor. But people that have God's favor have the answer to the world's jealousy. So don't hate the world for that. For God so loved the world, he paid the price because the world had nothing to give to make it better. So he paid the price so that we could not have these things in our life. These things will destroy a church. They will destroy a family. They will destroy relationships. When you start getting jealous of what somebody else has... They're better looking, they have more money, they have power, they have influence, somebody likes them, and you're jealous of it. The next thing you know, you become cruel, and you do cruel things that you would never think of doing. But because of jealousy, these things happen. And malice, I was looking up, what does that mean? It's a desire to inflict injury, harm, or suffering on another, either because of a hostile impulse or of a deep-seated meanness. So the motives of humanity boil down to being jealous. Proverbs 27 says, wrath is cruel and anger is <clears throat> outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Envy will do a work in your life. Be happy with what you have. There's always going to be people in the world richer than you. Accept it. 
There may be somebody that's your friend. I have some, a couple of friends that are billionaires. They never give me a penny. I don't ask them for a penny. But it's just kind of interesting that you know somebody that's worth a billion dollars. I guess they got there because they don't give anybody anything. <laughs> One billionaire was at the racquetball club, <clears throat> and his wife had a flat tire, and uh, the tires on his car were white walls. But he didn't want to pay for the white wall, so she had three white walls and one black wall because <clears throat> he was a billionaire. He had a pool in his backyard, but he wouldn't pay the money to heat it. But he was a billionaire. And at the club, <clears throat> and this is all true, he didn't want to pay the dues. So he was willing to fix the door, take out the trash, do whatever he could do. It's kind of like you're sitting in a restaurant and they say, you want to, you want to wash dishes for your meal. <laughs> he was a billionaire. But he was willing to do whatever because he just wanted to keep his money. And your money can't save you. But, but I know a couple of billionaires, it doesn't mean that they're happy. And I'm not envying what they have. They envy what I have. Because I'm not a billionaire but I'm a happy guy. I'm enjoying serving God. I like what I do. I'm on the Lord's side. I had to figure out how to react to people who resent me. As I look back, I have been resented all of my life by some people. And I used to try to figure out why, why? Then I realized it's not because of you. It's because of who you have. You have God in your heart. You're a child of God. You have the Holy Ghost. And all those other spirits out there hate the Holy Ghost. So you are going to be in a spiritual warfare, sometimes manifested in the physical warfare, because they hate what you have. You're a child of God. James 3.16 says, For there where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And then in 1 Peter 2, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking. This is good for us, right? Because we have gossiped and we have said things we didn't like. And we ought to look in our heart and say, why, why is it that I'm upset? Why is it that I'm not liking? What, what's going on here? Well, a lot of it is going to have to do with envying, jealousy, and strife. Malice is, you know, I wish the Lord would just chop their head off. I wish the Lord would just hit them in the head with a two by four. I, I, wish, I wish they would get it coming. And so when it happens, they're having a party in the street because they're so happy about somebody getting killed. And I'm thinking, how could your mind get to that place? Well, it's because of jealousy. Jealousy is cruel as the grave, and that's exactly what it's about. Let me just illustrate here. Joseph's brothers hated him. He had brothers. He had 11 brothers. Joseph had <clears throat> brothers, and they were all brothers of the same mom and dad, but they hated Joseph. Joseph might have been considered a brat. Joseph had a dream. He was just a kid. He didn't know any better. He told him the dream. All you guys bowed down to me, and I was there. I was, we were gathering stuff in the field, and all of your gatherings bowed down to my gatherings. And they didn't like it. What was it about it they didn't like? He was their brother. They should have said, well, wow, that's going to be neat. I wonder what that's about. No, they said, get away from us, you filthy dreamer. You do, you're just caught up on your ego. They were comparing what he said to how they felt, and they were struck with jealousy and anger and rage. And, and so it built up among them, and they talked to each other. And by the time it was over, they decided, we got to get rid of him. So they threw him in a pit. They threw him in a pit. We don't want to see him die. We don't want to do it with our own hands, but we're just going to get rid of him. And they threw him in a pit. One of the brothers got to thinking about that. And he said, you know, that's really not right. We shouldn't be responsible for killing our brother. And so there happened to be a caravan going by to Egypt. And so they got him out of the pit and sold him to the caravan going to Egypt. Mind you, God 
is in the picture all the time, and Joseph has favor with God. <laughs> Joseph's on a journey. He has a destiny. God's in his life, and he has confidence because he had a dream from God. Then he had another dream, and the sun and the moon and the stars bowed down to him. And, oh, this guy is really getting out of trouble or out of line. So they hated him. They sold him. By the time it was over, they show up in Egypt, and they're starving. And they look up to see who's the guy in charge of all the food. And now they're scared to death because they have sown so many bitter seeds and so much hatred and so many so much jealousy and now there's Joseph but but anybody that has God's favor is going to be Jesus like Christ like so Joseph didn't have animosity and a bad feeling he just said all things work together for the good and I'm here to help save you and the rest of our family and I'm sure they were embarrassed, but they had no power to stay uh, in the middle of jealousy because they were being saved and taken care of. That's what the Lord's going to do to the people that hate you. When people hate you, you got to understand, just keep on trucking because by the time it's over, they're going to see that you are blessed of God. They're jealous. Of you being blessed of God. But God is no respecter of persons. And he wants to bless them too. So if you're without. And you come to God. You're going to be blessed. If you don't like how things are. Or what you are. Or what color you are. Or whatever. When you come to God. You're going to have a whole different philosophy. And you are going to be blessed of God. No matter who you are. That's what God does. Daniel was in a captive land. And the Bible says, you read it, it says he was favored of the king. And all the other, it calls them presidents, all of the other guys around him began to be jealous of him because he was favored. You know, there's something about humanity that says it's got to be fair and nobody can be favored and nobody can be blessed. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. God is no respecter of persons and he is sovereign. He is not fair. Some people are seven feet tall. Some people are three feet tall. Some people are 500 pounds. Some people are 29 pounds. I mean, it, 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 you start looking and comparing and, that, and the Lord said, don't compare. He made you for what you are. You can't compare to somebody else. And so they began to resent Daniel because he was favored. Well, there was a reason he was favored, because he had God's favor. And the king was recognizing this guy has an excellent spirit. That's what the Bible says right there. He had an excellent spirit. And so the rest of the guys got together and said, let's figure out how to get this guy. And the Bible says they said we can find no wrong in him you can't find nothing wrong he he's got an excellent spirit but he has loyalty to his god so maybe we could come up with something that would that would cause him to disobey the law so they came up with a decree from the king that there was going to be a, a worship and you were going to have to not pray to any other god but their god and daniel opened up his window and started praying He's praying to the God whose favor he has, and that God is God. So I will pray to my God no matter what anybody else says. We have a Christian school, and charter schools came through from the government. And they said, we're going to give your property millions of dollars for your school. I'm on board. I'll take millions. We're going to pay your teachers the same thing that the public school teachers make. And everything's, it's going, to, it's going to just be amazing. Awesome. Only one thing. I mean, you could say, this is God. God is blessing us. It's awesome. We're going to be blessed. Well, don't violate anything that God said to be blessed by the world. They said there's only one thing about it, and that is you can't pray during school. My mind went to Daniel instantly. I'm thinking, <laughs> you told the guy he can't pray. You can't tell me I can't pray. I'm raising kids. I have a school. I'm on purpose. We, we have purchased and paid for 
and sponsored and invested in eternity, eternal lives. And so you can't tell us we can't pray. You can pray after four. You can pray before eight, but between eight and four, you got to tell them that God's on break. No, we're not doing it. So we didn't do it. We wouldn't do it. Other people did it. They don't even have a school anymore. We still have a school because it's not about the money. It's not about the devil's favor. The devil came along and said, let me make you an offer. He tempted the Lord the same way. And I'm saying, we already got a story in the Bible just like this. The guys resented him. They hated him. He was favored and he was blessed. And so they figured out how to get him. So <clears throat> the windows open. He's praying toward Jerusalem. And they went to tell the king. I mean, what, a, what an amazing, what, what is this about? This is jealousy. So they're telling the king, Daniel, you know Daniel. Yeah, he knows Daniel because he's the one that was favoring Daniel. Daniel is praying to his God and you made a decree. I was just reading it last night. You made a decree and once you make a decree, it can't be changed. They held the king's feet to the fire and the king was not happy. He was so sad that Daniel was going to be thrown into the lion's den. But he had to stick with what his decree was. And so they threw Daniel in the lion's den. And these guys had a good night's sleep and so did Daniel. But the next day the king shows up to the hole in the ground to see the lions down in the den. And he says, Daniel. He's just hoping against hope. I mean, these lions are hungry. They keep them hungry. They're ready to eat whatever comes down. And Daniel says, live long, O king. Live forever, O king. My God has delivered me from the mouths of the lions. My God. The king said, get him out of there. And I want all of these guys. And I want their wives and their children and everything about them. We're throwing them all in the lion's den. You can get nowhere in life being jealous. Jealousy is a motive. If you have it, I don't care if you're a child of God. You cannot live by the rule and the law of jealousy. That's what the devil wants. So these guys were thrown in there. And those lions, the Bible said, broke all of their bones and ate them all. Guys, wives, children, everything. I mean, the king said, we're getting rid of this evil, and I want everybody in the kingdom to know that Daniel's God is God. Everybody in this world that's living by jealousy is going to end up being destroyed. You ought to feel bad for them. I see what they did, and I'm saying they deserve it. But God is so merciful that he said you were like that too. But I changed you and I gave you a new heart. And I made a difference in your life. And now you are blessed and favored. How will you deal with jealousy from other people? Daniel had a God and a testimony that was loyalty to his God. And then we, let me read you my last illustration. It says, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will that, that you that I would release to you? And Barabbas, and, and Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy, everybody say envy, for envy they had delivered him. They envied Jesus. And so they delivered him to Pilate. And they, they had done it for envy. When he had sat down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with this just man. They called him a just man. I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will you that I should release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? And they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? 
What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail, he could prevail nothing, but that rather a turmoil was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am an innocent of this blood, of, this, of, of the blood of this just man. Note right here. You can't be an innocent bystander and not stand for the Lord. He already said, what shall I do to this just man? And they said, we want him crucified. He knew they did it for envy, but he didn't have the guts to stand up for the Lord. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Satan wants to destroy your children. And so Jesus was killed for jealousy and envy and strife. And he was violently killed because of what people had in their heart against him. You're a child of God. I'm not sure that we're going to be crucified. I don't plan on it. But I got to say... I'm going to do whatever it takes. You're a child of God. Your testimony in living for God and not compromising your testimony is the best testimony the world could see. You have power. You have power in the spirit realm. The Bible says in Corinthians, every woman has power on her head because of her hair. As she prays and prophesies with that hair as, as it kept uncut and long. That is a power on her head. You have protection. You have protection. I know they carried a sword in Jesus' day. But <clears throat> I'm not going to trust in a gun. I'm not going to trust in my own ability. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm not saying you can't carry a gun. I'm not, can't, I'm not saying you can't be prepared for something evil that happens. All I'm saying is, is I'm not putting my trust there. He said some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. I'm a child of God. You have protection. You have the riches of God. We have the riches of God. I, I felt convicted recently because I was wishing that I had something that I didn't have. And the Lord helped me to realize I have the Lord. And if I have the Lord, I preached a message about, if I have the Lord, then I know I'm going to make it through. Don't insult God by saying I want something else or I'm jealous of what somebody else has or I'm envious of what somebody else has when you have the Lord. You have the Lord. If you have the Lord, the devil's going to hate you. The world doesn't understand why they hate you, but you have the Lord. That's why they hate you, because you are protected. You have power. You're anointed. You're a child of God. You took on his name. You've been saved. You have a destiny. And so the evil world hates you. They're jealous of you. Let's stand. We need to control our desires and don't let any ill motive be in your heart. And then we need to be able to handle people who are jealous because of who we are and what we have. Don't let them push you around about who you are because you're on the job. You're on the job. And you're, if you're on the job, I'm telling you, if you're on the job, I've had it on every job in my life. And somehow by the grace of God or whatever, I've had a lot of jobs. I don't have time to tell you all the jobs, but I've been in different states and been in different places. I've had a lot of jobs. And on every job, there was people that resented and hated me. I just got used to it. I can't make everybody happy. I tried. I want to be nice. I do my best. <clears throat> but there's something about a child of God that the world resents. Now they're calling good evil and evil good. So that's where they are. But I'm just telling you today, you're facing this on your job. 
You're going to face this in your family with unsaved family members because they're not going to understand what it's like. But there's something about you because you have the presence of God in your life. You have a confidence. You're not living in fear. You're not worried. You've got God. You know how it's going to turn out. And so you're rejoicing. You have peace. The world is looking for peace, but you have peace. You're satisfied in yourself for who you are. Since the seventh grade, I have never worried about how, how, how tall I am. I could run faster. I could do a lot of things different, but there's always a bigger axe for a bigger tree. So don't think you're just going to be the best at anything. Be happy for what you are. By now, I'm just glad I can walk on my two feet. By now, I'm just glad I can eat what I want and live a life. Because I have God. I have his favor. I have his healing. I have his love. I have the blessings of God. But envy started with Cain and Abel, and it has been the tool that the devil has used throughout the ages. And right here in the Gospels, the, the apostles are talking to us in the church. Don't let this be named among you. Don't be a part of this, because if you live like that, then you're going to die like that. And so thank God. Thank God that we are the children of God. I want to change your focus today, and when you come to the altar today, it's about accepting what God has done in your life. God has done things in your life. People get mad at God. I have people here over the years tell me I'm so mad at God because of what he did. Well, first of all, God didn't do it. The devil did it. And God can turn it into good. He can take what the devil meant for evil and turn it into good. But don't charge God because God is good. And you're his child. So be happy for how you look. Be happy for where you came from. Be happy for what he delivered you from. Be happy for the privilege to be in his house. Come on, let's praise God for his goodness.